Hi guys, in this video, let's learn about what is pap test. Pap test is also called as pap any color test or surface biopsy or exfoliative cytology. So this pap test is basically, it's a screening test for the cancer. Okay. And this pap test should be done in 21 years of age female who is sexually active. And she should undergo annual checkup with the pap test for three years. Okay. This pap smear is only a screening test. It's not a confirmative test. If you, if you do a pap smear and if you get positive, that is, if any abnormal cells are present, then do colposcopy or cervical biopsy, fractional curettage to confirm your diagnosis. This pap test can be a false positive if, you, if there is any infection present. Okay, if you, get, if you do a pap smear and you get pap smear negative for 3 years, then you have to do a 5 yearly pap test and this is adequate to tell that this female has no cervical cancer. Okay. Then this pap smear should be done before you do any vaginal examination because if you do vaginal examination, your fingers may remove any desquamated cells present in the cervix. So you should not do vaginal examination before doing the pap smear because you will get a false negative test. Then if you use any lubricant, it will what it will cause, it will prevent the detection of any organisms present in the cervix. And if, if there is any vaginal bleeding present and if you go do a pap test, it will alter your examination. Okay. Then what is a prerequisite before you do any pap test? The prerequisite is the patient should not have any intercourse or touch with her partner for 24 hours before doing a pap test. Then what is the best time for test? It should be done around ovulation. It should not be done when she is bleeding. Okay. It should be done around ovulation. Then what is the position? She should be placed in a dorsal position and her labia should be parted. And then you introduce a cusco speculum into a vagina without use of any lubricant or the jelly because it may cause any, like prevent the detection of any organisms. So without, without using any lubricant or the jelly, go and ex expose the cervix part. Now, scrape the squamocolumna junction, okay, with the aries spatula. That is, you have to rotate the aries spatula 360 degrees 3 to 4 times to get a scrapings. And these scrapings should be spread on a glass slide. And this scraping spread on the glass slide should be fixed immediately with 95% ethyl alcohol and the ether for 30 minutes. Okay. Then after doing this, go and do air dry. Air dry. Air dry this slide and then stain with the pap smear or the or any short stain. Now, if it is satisfactory, that is... When you will call it as pap test positive, if any endocervical cells are seen, then you will tell it as satisfactory test. Now, from the endocervix, you have to scrape with a brush, with a cyto brush. And then you have to add to the slide. This endocervical uh, sample scraped with the cyto brush is taken because to improve the predictive value. So, from the endocervix, you have to go with the cyto brush. And now, in modern... Modern techniques, we use cytospray fixative, okay? Then what is hormonal cytological evaluation? Hormonal cytological evaluation for this, the scrapings from the upper lateral part of the vaginal walls are taken, okay? The normal smear should have any endometrial cells, histiocytes, blood cells, any bacteria are seen. And three types of cells are present. What are they? Basal or parabasal cells. They are basophilic. Middle squamous cells, they are also basophilic. And superficial acidophilic cells, they are pycnotic. They have pycnotic nuclei. Okay, these are the three types of cells we can see in a normal smear. What are they? Basal, parabasal cells, middle squamous cells and superficial acidophilic cells. Okay, if you have any malignant cells, if there is any malignant cell present, then how it looks? It is hyperchromatic and that is increased chromatin content. Nuclear size may vary and there is a small cytoplasm. Nucleus to the cytoplasm ratio is increased in a malignant cell. Okay. Now we have a classification that is Papanicola classification and we have five grades. Grade 1, here the normal cells are seen. Then grade 2, slightly abnormal cells that is some inflammatory changes present there. And you have to repeat the smear after treatment, after treating the infection. And then what is grade 3 here? Serious abnormal cells are present and you have to do a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. And this grade 3 is also called as mild dysplasia that is SIN1, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1. And what is grade 4 here also? Abnormal cells are present, possibly malignant. Okay. Now here we need a definitive biopsy. Then grade 5, here malignant cells are present and this is severe 
cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 3 so these are the five grades and we have newer cytology classification that is grade 1 is normal cytology 2 is inflammatory smear 3 is sin 1 that is mild dysplasia 4 is sin 2 that is moderate sin 2 3 that is carcinoma in situ and 5 is malignant tadpole cells are present with nuclei that are abnormal okay this is about the newer cytological classification now in a post menopausal female if you want to do a pap test here the squamous columnar junction is indrawn because of the estrogen is deficient no in post menopausal females so squamous columnar junction is indrawn now how you expose the squamous columnar junction in this female now you have to give her a 10 day estrogenic cream so that this cream will expose the squamous columnar junction then the test can be done now if a patient has undergone any radiation now if you do a post radiation cytology for this patient in this post radiology uh, post radiation patient you may have scarring atrophy atrophy of the vagina may be present cells are enlarged vacuolated there can be a multi multiple nucleated cells and nuclear wrinkling and inflammatory cells are present and here it's difficult to sample okay this is about a patient who have undergone radiation then liquid based cytology what is liquid based cytology it is to screen the human papilloma virus and this is superior to the pap smear here we use a liquid based cytology and what is visual inspection after acetic acid application that is via visual inspection after acetic acid application here you will grossly inspect the cervix you apply the acetic acid and you leave it for one minute then you will see the estovite areas if they are abnormal that is sin is present and in a pap if you do a pap smear that is liquid based cytology with hpv testing and start at 30 years of age or 21 years 21 years of age female who are sexually active and if you get a pap smear negative then you have to repeat yearly testing for three years then still if you get negative then five yearly tests should be done up to 60 years then if you get positive do colposcopy or the biopsy okay and then what is Schiller test Schiller test is a visual inspection after Lugol's iodine application we like visual inspection after Lugol's iodine application then it detects the presence of glycogen in the superficial cells of the vaginal epithelium and mata and now the vagina should be stained with the Lugol's iodine what is Lugol's iodine it is 5% iodine with 10% potassium iodide in water so 1 gram of iodine 2 gram of potassium iodide so if it's if it's positive that is it's normal vagina will look like maho mahogany brown color in the presence of glycogen if unstained areas are present that is there is if there is no brown color then you have to do a biopsy or the hpe for the confirmation okay then what is colposcopy colposcope it's a binocular microscope it has 10 to 20, 20 times magnification and it's used to locate the abnormal areas and we can do a direct biopsy from the suspicious areas on the cervix and the vagina so if it's where you have to do this colposcopy if, if it is only a pap smear test positive only then you have to do this colposcopy okay with the use of this colposcopy false negative biopsy can be avoided then what is endometrial biopsy it's a office opd procedure for the investigation of the female partner infertility mainly for the infertility we'll do this endometrial biopsy and performed in a premenstrual phase okay then what are the uses of this endometrial biopsy we can investigate for the tubercular endometritis diagnosis of the corpus luteal phase defect we can use this endometrial biopsy here the small curate is passed into the uterine cavity and a small strip of endometrial lining is scraped and for the it sent for the histopathological examination so this is a cervical cell pathology in a squamous tissue so okay and normal cells are basal parabasal intermediate cells pre-cornified cornified hyperconified so this is a normal thing and these are the inflammatory and pre-cancer carcinoma in situ and cancer okay so in the inflammatory cells you can see superficial inflammatory intermediate and basal cells in the pre-cancer cells stage you can see dumbbell type precocious multi-lobulated multi-nucleated gigantism that is cell is enlarged there is perinuclear halo basal so in the pre-cancer cell what you can see dumbbell precocious multi-lobulated multi-nucleated gigantism pre-nuclear halo and the basal type in the cancer cell you can see pre-invasive basal type differentiated and undifferentiated type so this is the cytology okay and so these are the airy spatula cytobrush wooden spatula plastic spatula so with these you have to do the pap smear and this is the 
pap smear table bethesda classification that is i uh, have told no they are five grades and what is bethesda classification they are sample adequate unsatisfactory squamous cell abnormalities atypical asc squamous cells so these are the grades bethesda classification you can go read okay this is about the pap smear so pap smear is very important when you go to gynec opd so you have to know something or little about this pap test thank you